Hello, and welcome to this episode of Epicurrent. Current. I'm your host, Bill Florence. And today we're joined by four guests who are going to be discussing EPRI's Hydrogen Education for a Decarbonized Global Economy, or H2EDGE, initiative. H2EDGE is currently helping develop and train the emerging hydrogen industry workforce through a combination of professional development activities and targeted university-level instruction. From EPRI, we're joined by Dr. Eladio Knipping. He's the principal investigator of the H2EDGE initiative and Dr. Crystal York. She is the co-principal investigator for the H2EDGE initiative. From the University of Delaware, we're joined by Dr. A.J. Prasad. He's the engineering alumni distinguished professor of mechanical engineering, and Dr. Anil Bika, the director of workforce development at the Center for Clean Hydrogen. Eladio, let's begin with you. Please give us an overview of the hydrogen industry today and tell us more about the H2EDGE initiative. Fantastic. Thank you, Bill. We really have a challenge right now uh, going from uh, today to 2050 to decarbonize the energy system. And we have different levers that we can pull in order to do so. Uh, we can rely on energy efficiency, also a cleaner electric grid. Uh, we can electrify efficiently different end uses, such as light-duty vehicles, um, and leverage that cleaner electricity grid. But that is likely only to get us so far within the uh, decarbonization path. We're still going to have several hard to abate sectors in the energy system that will require low carbon fuels, such as hydrogen, in order to decarbonize. And uh, these uh, end uses can include things like heavy duty transportation and heavy industry, cement, steel. And um, what we need in order to transition and leverage the opportunity that hydrogen can provide as a low carbon fuel is a skilled workforce. And this skilled workforce will be very uh, varied. It would include scientists, engineers, skilled workers, craft workers that will be working together in order to uh, manifest the benefits of a hydrogen economy. But that's going to take a lot of the workforce development. And it's going to have to be done in a just manner. The opportunities of the hydrogen economy are going to have to be uh, uh, spread throughout different sectors of our uh, diverse workforce and make sure that we have an opportunity to train uh, a, a diverse uh, set of individuals and also those folks that may be in current industries understand that they can be reskilled, upskilled, into new workforce opportunities in the hydrogen workforce. So how can we achieve this? Well, there are many efforts currently underway in order to develop a trained and educated hydrogen workforce. And one of these is the h 2 edge uh, effort. As you mentioned, h 2 edge stands for the Hydrogen Education for a Decarbonized Global Economy, h 2 edge program. And it is supported by the U.S. Department of Energy's Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technology Office. And we acknowledge the DOE support because without their support, this program would not be possible. In addition, we are also collaborating with the Low Carbon Resources Initiative, which is a joint venture with, between EPRI and GTI Energy in order to accelerate and develop the opportunities for low carbon fuels and technology. So what is Edge to Edge doing? And why is it needed? Edge to Edge uh, is um, establishing and building partnerships across academia and industry and other workforce development efforts so that we can come together and find ways to educate and train different parts of the workforce. And we're also assessing workforce needs. We need to understand how the academic programs in the U.S. are set up in order to tackle the challenge of a hydrogen workforce, uh, educating them, and also at the same time, understanding what are the skills needed for the workforce so that we understand where training and education efforts can be best uh, 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 focused. And with that, I'd like to Dr. pass it over to my uh, co-principal investigator. Yeah, so Eladio set that up really well. Um, H2Edge is working um, to advance um, the emerging hydrogen economy through this workforce development program. Education and workforce development are key enablers to a low emission future. 
And the hydrogen industry is expected to grow quickly and expected to uh, grow more than we've seen in the past. So thus creating more jobs within the industry. So we need to um, support uh, the training of those uh, th that workforce, uh, increase awareness of hydrogen and increase awareness that these jobs actually exist. Um, we're trying to facilitate collaboration between academy academia and industry and increase training efforts through both professional training development as well as um, increasing training at the increasing training at the university level through new courses um, dedicated to hydrogen. Uh, and we're doing this to ensure a, a just transition just like Aladio mentioned. So um, HGH is working to build uh, a sustainable infrastructure to develop that workforce for uh, the emerging hydrogen economy as a part of the overall decarbonized global economy. Dr. Yersh, you mentioned you know, guess working with universities and I guess that currently um, the H2H program is, uh, is working with the University of Delaware, the University of Houston and Oregon State universities are like founding um, partner universities with, with this initiative. And Dr. Prasad, um, why did the University of Delaware decide to get involved with this with this particular initiative? Yeah, so uh, the University of Delaware has a long history in uh, the research and teaching of hydrogen and fuel cells. I would say this history goes back uh, 20 years. Uh, I'll give you a few examples. About 20 years ago, I started uh, the University of Delaware's fuel cell bus program which conducted research in the uh, development and deployment of uh, three fuel cell buses on our campus, as well as a hydrogen refueling station right here in partnership with Air Liquide. Um, around the same time, uh, we started the Center for Fuel Cell Research. Um, in the classroom, I've been teaching intro to fuel cells since 2004, so that's about 20 years now. Um, with an annual class size of um, 30 to 40 students. We've had over 600 students that have um, taken this course, and many of them are now employed uh, in the hydrogen and the fuel cell industry. And most recently, uh, the university has established our Center for Clean Hydrogen, which is focused on the production of hydrogen, uh, specifically green hydrogen, uh, from electrolysis powered by renewable electricity. So given this long history of research and education and training in hydrogen, it made a lot of sense for UD to join EPRI and to join H2H uh, because our mission and our goals are so well aligned. Great, thank you. Um, Dr. Bika, could you highlight some of um, the universities? the University of Delaware's overall strategy for a hydrogen workforce development? Absolutely, Bill. Um, yeah, so I, I joined the uh, the team about five months ago, and uh, my background was actually uh, in the automotive industry. I spent the last 12 years in automotive industry. And the main reason I came here was because of uh, all the activity that was happening in the Delaware area around green hydrogen. And uh, one of the things that uh, we are extremely excited about is that we are participating, uh, we're actively participating in the, uh, the local hydrogen hub here within, uh, within our region that's called Mach 2. And so we are actually here at University of Delaware, we're leading up the higher education workforce development component for the hub. And in, as part of those activities, we're taking a, uh, a very coordinated approach. And uh, so we have five uh, university partners and we are each of us are taking uh, a different uh, different focus area when it comes to uh, hydrogen. So specifically here at University of Delaware, we're focusing on one of the things we're starting off with is uh, doing a, a jobs and needs analysis. So we are in the process of developing curriculum, but prior to developing the curriculum, we really want to understand what the uh, skills needs are for the industry in our area. So that's step one. But then one thing we're very very excited about is a uh, electrochemical engineering master's program. So that's the other thing that we're in the process of, uh, of, of standing up. And then the other, other thing that we're doing is, uh, you know, we're, we're working in a coordinated fashion with the other universities. And one of our partner universities is actually standing up a hands-on hydrogen safety program. So we are actively involved in, uh, in that as well. And uh, now, 
actually this summer, we're, we're super excited about having uh, high school students. So one of the things that when I started, when I joined the team and talking to the workforce development community, I kept hearing this over and over saying, you know, we got to start earlier. We got to have students get excited, you know, in high schools, middle schools about STEM education and hydrogen. And uh, so we actually launched a uh, high school uh, research program here this summer that we call Hydrogen Z, where we have students that are coming in for the summer and um, and they're participating in a seven week research program where they conduct uh, uh, research on our test stands. And uh, they have individuals like Dr. Prasad come in and give guest lectures on electrochemistry. So the students are able to, to, uh, to, to get educated, not just on the theory, but also on the hands-on aspect. And uh, so, so, you know, we're still in the early days right now, but uh, a lot of exciting activities going on, everything from, you know, high school students uh, to, through uh, graduate students. And then also we have undergraduate students as well. Of course, like Dr. Prasad mentioned, we offer courses. Um, he, he's been teaching uh, the fuel cell course. But in addition to that, we have now, we have started to, to bring other students that aren't traditionally in the hydrogen domain area uh, work on, uh, on clean energy and hydrogen. I'll give you an example. Um, we have right now three data science students that are helping us with our job skills um, uh, analysis that we're doing. Because one of the things that we realized that was that this is such an early, you know, nascent industry. And there are a few reports that are out there available globally, you know, five, 10 of these reports with a lot of very, very good information. And it's kind of challenging because they are not so standardized. So these students right now are developing algorithms and a tool um, through which uh, we can uh, do kind of text mining and text clustering. So again, they're applying their data analytics skills and computer science skills towards uh, this uh, this clean energy challenge that we're all being faced with. And uh, they're super excited about it. They're actively involved in that project right now. And that project is actually sponsored um, uh, by EPRI. So uh, we have weekly meetings with our EPRI uh, colleagues, Alicia Roberts, and uh, and yeah, the team is halfway through their project and they're super excited about it. That's very, very cool. You, you talked about, I mean, hydrogen hubs. I mean, can you, I mean, I know this maybe may not be right in your wheelhouse, but can you explain why, I mean, the, the concept of hydrogen hubs and the university's involvement with that? Absolutely. Maybe I can take that uh, to start off with. So these are hydrogen hubs. Uh, it's a uh, DOE funded hubs um, and the DOE is funding seven hydrogen hubs across the United States. And I mentioned that you know, I came from uh, from industry, from the automotive industry, and I used to do a lot. I do used to do a lot of uh, total cost of ownership analysis. And one of the key things that kept coming up time and time again was the cost of hydrogen across the board, and that was really a barrier. And uh, one of the things that the DOE realized was, okay, now we've you know technology is in such a way that that's not really a barrier. People have figured this thing out degradation. They can get these fuel cells to last. They can get the membranes to last. Now it's just a matter of just volume. So what the DOE said was, hey, we're going to we're gonna dump in about $7 billion and create these hubs across the U.S., seven different hubs to kickstart the hydrogen economy. And that's just what they did. And so right now, you know, we are fortunate enough to have a hydrogen hub here in Delaware, Philadelphia, in South New Jersey. And there are other hubs, you know, in California, Northwest, Texas. And each hub is working on you know, things that are a technology that's a little bit different in terms of hydrogen production. For example, you know, some hubs are focused mainly on blue hydrogen, which is uh, hydrogen uh, produced through uh, steam methane reforming and then uh, using uh, carbon sequestration. Okay. Um, and But here within our hub, we're focused, as Dr. Prasad mentioned, on green hydrogen. So that's hydrogen produced uh, through electrolysis from renewable electricity. And uh, so the DOE is funding these these hubs. And it's not just the DOE money but it also draws in a lot of industry money as well. And so it's, it's generating a lot of activity, a lot of not only interest, but these are technology readiness level nine, right? Deployment ready type projects that are going in place um, uh, across the, uh, the U.S., across these hubs. And uh, I don't know if you want to add anything else, Dr. Prasad or Eladio or Crystal. Yeah, if I can just jump in. Uh, I mean, you explained it really nicely. Um, I will say hydrogen is experiencing its most shining moment right now in our nation's history. So the Biden administration has invested heavily in hydrogen. And as I mentioned, creating a network of seven hydrogen hubs all across the country, each of them funded to the tune of about $1 billion each. Um, 
Each hub in turn draws in a long list of companies that wish to engage in hydrogen production, hydrogen transport, hydrogen distribution, and end use. And all of this industrial activity is going to require an educated and well-trained workforce. So uh, this is it's really an urgent need right now to develop the skilled hydrogen workforce. And I'm, I'm uh, proud to be part of H2 Edge, which is contributing exactly uh, to, to this mission. You've been involved in this area for quite some time. I mean, what does it feel like sort of like to be to see maybe this sort of in level of enthusiasm among such, I mean, I mean, students um, for the subject area? Absolutely. Thank you. This is this is really very energizing right now. So I've been, like I said, teaching hydrogen and fuel cells for a long time, 20 years. I've seen lots of students come through my lab and the classroom. And, you know, young people, students are always concerned about the environment. They're concerned about global warming. They're concerned about sustainability and renewable energy sources. And so something like hydrogen and fuel cells really resonates with this, with the young, you know, young population. Dr. York, how, I mean, this, this uh, how important is this engagement with, with young people like this and getting them involved at such, you know, an early stage as opposed to maybe when they, them getting out of college going, okay, well, I mean, what do I want to do now? But how important is it, I mean, getting the, the students involved at that, that early age? I think attracting students early in their educational journey is essential to ensure um, that successful uh, future workforce in the hydrogen industry and the energy sector more broadly. Uh, students have lots of interests. Some are interested in, um, in the upcoming AI, machine learning, um, but also we need to make sure they uh, make sure uh, to support those students that are really interested in hydrogen and the energy sector. Um, hydrogen related jobs, uh, job opportunities are relatively new and are evolving quickly. Um, and this demonstrates kind of that need to increase awareness at the university level. Um, and by introducing this topic to students, they gain insights into uh, this critical growing field and potentially shaping their uh, career paths in the future. Um, so yeah, this supports educational and workforce development programs. Um, H2 Edge supports uh, these educational and workforce development programs to support the long-term industry growth and resilience. So the H2 Edge is, is, is underway. It seems like it's, it's got a lot of different things going. So what are like next steps for, for the initiative and where, what, what can we expect next? Well, Bill, um, I'd like to focus that right now, in addition to our three partner universities, we have 17 affiliate universities in the h 2 h network. And the three partner universities have developed uh, educational material that is shared broadly across the network. Um, in addition, we have 20 industry advisors that provide input to the futures, the next steps of h 2 h as we uh, determine priorities with respect to the development of materials and how we engage with different aspects of the workforce from four-year universities to community colleges to trade schools. Um, we have also been very successful uh, with a professional development program where we have uh, developed courses uh, introducing hydrogen, a uh, course on electrolytic hydrogen, a course on hydrogen end uses, hydrogen and power generation, uh, hydrogen storage and delivery, and the hydrogen and natural gas, uh, gas blending. And all of these courses uh, will be offered in a virtual format. In fact, our introduction to hydrogen course attracted over 280 participants online. And we want to continue to develop those materials and make them accessible by the broad community so that folks across the U.S., in different regions, such as in, in uh, the Delaware region, the Mach 2 region, can leverage that material that has been developed by this program supported by the DOE and help advance uh, education across different aspects of the workforce. So we will be continuing to perform our GAPS assessments, understanding what skills are needed, what workforce is needed, how uh, edu education is uh, distributed across different academic institutions, and then develop a plan uh, in order to address what are the most critical needs uh, that a program such as H2H can address in order to help 
uh, bolster the educational uh, curriculum in high in high demand. Yeah, and if I could add, we have um, recently uh, conducted an in-person workshop, um, and that in-person workshop brought a lot of key stakeholders, um, both our partners, our industry partners, our university partners, but also more broadly, uh, people that are working on this issue, the hydrogen workforce development or workforce in the energy sector. Um, we brought together um, trades and labor organizations. We brought together community colleges as well. So we expanded um, our connections during this workshop. And a lot of key insights came out of it. We made a lot of really good connections. And I think it was one of the most impactful things we've done so far. Um, so it's not just connections between H2 Edge and us, it's connections across um, other um, people as well, creating a better network. Create, um, and people are reaching out and, and connecting um, uh, together more often now um, and just increasing the awareness that these people are even out, out there. Um, so that's some key benefits that came out of our workshop. And we plan to take those insights um, to develop the future, to help develop the future of H2 Edge. Great. Uh, Dr. Prasad, Dr. Bika, I mean, um, we're almost out of time, but just any quick, very, very quick closing thoughts from the university, uh, the university's perspective? Yeah, I'll just add that um, one of the most rewarding aspects for me uh, in my engagement with EPRI and H2 Edge was to create this hydrogen course. So uh, along with uh, three other university colleagues, uh, each of us contributed uh, materials to create a new course on hydrogen science, uh, technology, and economics. And this course is, is now complete and it's available to any of our affiliated university partners to use within their own curriculum. Um, uh, individual faculty can either select uh, material from these courses to incorporate within their existing courses, or they can create a new standalone course based on our materials. And we structured all the materials in the form of modules, which makes it very easy for affiliated faculty to go in and pick and choose what they want to incorporate. So um, although you know it's four university professors that created this material, Having a large um, group of affiliated faculty is like a force multiplier, and it takes all of this knowledge out to universities across the nation. And to me, that's very exciting because that can contribute to creating an educated workforce around hydrogen. Dr. York, where can people go if they want more information about H2 Edge and, and some of the activities that are taking place? Yeah, so you can go to hydrogen.epri.com and find H2 Edge H2 Edge's website on there, and we will be uploading all the workshop materials uh, for free there. Or you could email us at h2edge at epri.com. Great. Well, we, we're out of time, but we could obviously talk um, probably hours more about, about this subject and about the work that's going on here. But I'd like to thank each of you for joining us today on this episode of Epri Current. Um, uh, for those that are listening or watching, please subscribe to our podcast. Um, uh, we'd, we'd love for you to join us and um, thank you so much for joining us today um, I'm Bill Florence for Every Current. we'll talk to you next time goodbye if you like today's show we invite you to subscribe to our podcast and feel free to share the podcast with your colleagues and friends for more information about EPRI please visit our website at www.epri.com and don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter at EPRI News together we are shaping the future of energy.